Hi guys, so I want to answer a question that I've seen posted a lot, and it's one that I was unsure about as well at first, when I first started using Hi. So the question is, how do you s tie a sample map to a preset so the user can switch their presets and the sample map will change? So we're going to look at how to do that. So I've set up a project here, there's nothing in it other than two samples and two sample maps. Each sample map has one sample in it. So let's look at highs. And I'm going to add a sampler. So I've already got this project open here. I've already loaded it once. So in the sample map drop down, we can see the two sample maps. And nothing in them except one sample each, but that's not important. And we're going to add a user interface. And I'll just go back to this view for a moment. We can open the interface here as well. So we can switch sample maps with this menu. So the first thing we're going to do is on our user interface, we're going to duplicate the functionality of this menu. So we can switch sample maps from our script. So we'll add a drop down menu. So I've called it CMB sample map because CMB because it's a combo box, sample map because it's going to display the sample maps. And what we need to do, we need to get a list of all the sample maps. And there's a function to do that. So we type in const var, because we're going to save this as a constant, and sample maps equals sampler dot, and then I'm going to hit escape, and it's going to bring up the, um, the autocomplete. And it's something like get sample map list or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, get sample map list. Yeah, okay. So I'll hit F5 on that to compile it. And if we look at the live variables, we can now see that in this array of sample maps that we've declared here, we've got both sample map names. So that's nice and easy. Now all we need to do is assign those names to the um, items of the combo box. So let's get a reference to the combo box first of all. So I'll just right click on this and select create custom, uh, no, create script variable definition and just paste that in. So now we've got the, uh, we've got a reference to the combo box. So we want to set the items. So it's set, and then we just type in items. So items refers to uh, this down here, where I'm just typing in over there. That's the items. And we're going to um, now the items wants a, a string, so you do like item one, and then you put a comma, and then item two, and then a comma. I think it's a comma, or is it a black backslash? We'll, we'll find out anyway. But it, it's something like that. So it expects a single string, but obviously we've got an array, so we need to convert that array to a string. So um, I'm just trying to remember what it needs for the list. I think it's actually a slash and then an n. So I think it'd be like item one slash n. I think that's what it is. Anyway, we'll find out. So we're going to take our sample maps. That's this array we made here, which has the sample maps. And we're going to use the join function. And then inside here, we're going to put um, uh, quotation marks. And then I think it's forward slash n. And basically what this does is, is the join function takes all the different elements in the array and just strings them together and it'll put this in between each one the slash n so let's hit compile and just see if this works uh, nope so it's not slash n hmm okay so to find out what this is oops I'm just going to um, type in some items manually in here item 1 item 2 item 3 and then I'm going to hit compile then I'm going to click on the widget and I'm going to press J and then we can see what it is okay so oh, it's backslash n I did a forward slash n so yeah so items should be item 1 backslash n item 2 backslash n okay so that's where I went wrong I did a forward slash so if I change that to a backslash there we go so now we've got our samples listed in our uh, our sample maps listed in our combo box so now all we need to do is make it so when you change the uh, selection, it will change the sample map. And the first thing we're going to need to do is get a reference to our sampler. 
Now there's different ways to do this, but we'll just we're just going to do it the most straightforward way. I'm just going to right click on the sampler and select uh, create script variable declaration, and I'll just paste it up here at the top. So now we've got a reference to our sampler. We've got our sample maps array, and we've got our combo box. Let's put some comments in here. Oops. Now, if you've got more than one sampler, then you got to handle things a bit differently. Uh, right. So now we need to make a callback function for this. So create custom callback. And yeah, we can just leave that as it is. That's fine. So whatever we write here is going to happen when the value of this combo box is changed. And what we want to happen is we want to load a sample map into the sampler. So we're going to say a sampler one dot, and then I think it's load sample map, set sample map, something to do with the sample map. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, it is load sample map. Okay. Load. Why isn't that coming up? Sample map. Right, now one other thing we need to do is because I got the reference of the sampler by right clicking and selecting create script uh, declaration, it retrieved the sampler as a child synth, but we need it as a sampler. So what we can do is we can put after sampler one here, we can put dot as sampler. Make sure you put the brackets on the end and then uh, that should work I think if I remember correctly it's been a while since I've done this and then the sample map we want to load is the one we've got selected so we can use the value of the um, combo box combined with our array of sample maps and that will uh, give us the correct name for the sampler there uh, for the sample map so I'm just going to comment this out so we can see what the value of the combo box is so we'll just Print this to the console. So now if I, let's clear this out, if I change sample map, we can see the values that we get out. So what's important to note here is that the first element, uh, sorry, the first item in the menu gets an, a value of one. It doesn't get a value of zero. But in an array, the first element of an array is always zero. So you just got to be aware of that, that there's a, an offset of one. So we just got to make sure we we reduce the value by one when we're using it when we're using a combo box value as an array index. So we're going to load the sample map. So we're going to call our sample maps array. Put the value in there and subtract one. And if I've done this correctly, that should work fine. Um, yeah, that all looks good. So let's go back. So we've got sample map one selected. Now if we select sample map two. It loads sample map two. Okay, so that's the first stage. We can now load a sample map through our script. So now let's look at the second part, which is the actual preset browser. Uh, I'll just save this. Save preset. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to add a, a preset browser. Now, the concept of a preset browser, it's not like a snapshot of the whole instrument. It doesn't record the state of everything in the instrument. All a preset browser does is it say, oh, oh sorry, all a preset does is it saves the state of all of the controls on your main interface. So if you've got other scripts doing other things and you've loaded sample maps and you've set up ADSRs and uh, effects and LFOs and things like that, the preset doesn't care about any of those. It's only going to save the, con the state of the controls on the main interface. So with that in mind, let's add a preset browser. So we're going to add a floating tile. And from the drop down of uh, content type, we're going to select preset browser. Now you can make custom preset browsers, but we're just going to use the uh, standard one. And I'm not going to change anything with it. We'll just leave it as it is. Okay, so when you uh, save a preset, it will save the state of all controls on the interface that have uh, their save in preset setting. This one, save in preset 
enabled. And you'll see a little green light over here in the widget list if it's enabled. So for our combo box, we're going to do that. So let's set our sampler, uh, our sample map to sample map one. And now we're going to save a preset. Oh, we've got to add a bank first of all. Yep. Bank one. Category one. And now we'll add a preset. So we'll call this preset one. Okay, that's done. Now let's change the sample map two. And now we'll add another preset. Preset two. So now let's go back to our main interface. Now, if we select preset one, it's going to load, uh, it's going to change the value of this combo box because all the preset does is save the state of the controls on the interface. And then this preset uh, combo box is going to change the sample map. There we go. So now we've got a preset that can change the sample map. Now it can get way more complicated than this if you've got different sample maps or different samplers, but the principle is still the same. You need a combo box that has some value. Uh, in our case, we're just using the um, value directly to change the sample map, but you might want it to just be a, a flag. So you might say, oh, okay, if the sample, if the sample map menu has a value of zero, I want you to load this sample map into this sampler and another sample map into another sampler. But we're just doing a one-to-one -one with this example to keep it simple. And um, I forgot where I was going with that, but yeah, anyway, so that's the uh, basic principle. Now, one other thing, if you've got a preset browser, you don't want the user to just change the sample map directly because you want the preset, you want them to choose it through the preset browser so that all the other controls that go along with that preset are updated as well. So in that case, you want to hide the preset browser. So just, uh, sorry, the sample map. Uh, combo box so just select the combo box and over here where it says visible just disable that before you save the instrument and send it to people so you only need to use this combo box when you're setting up all your presets so if I can I'm gonna load up one of my other projects and just show you a, a real-world example of this um, because I've, I've used this technique uh, let's load up my woodwind library So this is quite a complicated instrument, but um, and the interface won't even fit on the screen there, but um, it uses the same principle. So let's have a look at it. So um, I was showing the old preset there from the last thing. So here's the preset browser that I'm using. It's a standard preset browser, I've just changed the look of it. So if I was to load up, uh, let's say an alto flute, it's going to uh, change the keyboard layout and it sets it, it restores all the controls and stuff like that. If I choose another one, um, again, watch watch the keyboard layout for this. So we'll go with the bassoon. It changes the keyboard layout. So selecting the preset is doing a lot of different things, but the important thing it's doing for us is it's changing sample maps. So there are a lot of sample maps in this. So uh, we've got uh, staccatos and um, overlays and flutter tongues and stuff like that. So let's. See if we can see all these samplers at once. Okay, so we've got a few different ones set up here. And now if I select a different preset, you'll see all of these sample maps update. Um, let's go with this one. There we go. So these have all switched now to the contrabassoon version. If I go to clarinets, we can see all these clarinet ones update. So this is using the same principle, it's just sort of expanded on. So rather than doing a one-to-one -one with that combo box equaling one specific sample map, I have the value of the combo box changing a whole load of sample maps. But the principle is still the same, so you can expand it to, um, to a bigger scenario like this if you need it, or you can just use it on a simple instrument um, where it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the combo box value and the uh, sample map that's being loaded. All right, well... Uh, that's all for this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.